Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Um, we are beginning our revival meetings today and we want to thank God. My name is Reverend Benson. Uh, and I want to thank God that uh, we have come today so that we can uh, be able to uh, know a number of things concerning uh, what the Lord has for us as Christians and uh, uh, what we will be running is something that will be, uh, will be able to answer some of the questions that we normally have in our lives and some of the questions that people have uh, in their lives and therefore I would want to say that uh, you are in the right place and even those ones who are following us on, on, on Facebook, I want to tell you that you are in the right place and you are listening to the right message, uh, the message of the time, the message of the day and I know that God is going to uh, uh, speak to us even as we continue to learn and understand what God has kept for us. Amen. Buona sifia sana. And I want to uh, begin by saying, all of us, we are looking forward, we are looking forward to that uh, moment, that time that we shall be together or we shall be with the Lord and we shall be together with our God and we will be there with him years without an end. And that is why we are Christian today. That is why we are, we are what we are today. And I want to encourage each and every one of us uh, that we continue to uh, uh, be Christians, uh, continue, to be, uh, continue to be saved so that we will reign and we will be together with our God forevermore. Praise the name of our Lord. As our sister has said, or Pastor Agnes has say, had said, I am talking about the blessed hope. But I'm not only talking about the blessed hope, but I'm talking about the doctrine about the future. I'll be talking about the doctrine, doctrines, doctrines about the future. And they are, they, it has been divided into four. It has been divided, or it's divided by, uh, it is divided into four. Uh, number one is what we are talking about, the blessed hope. That is number one. So we'll talk about the blessed hope. Then we will talk as we continue, as we continue for the next three days, we also talk about the Mirinio reign of Christ. The Mirinio reign of Christ. And then we'll talk about the final judgment. We'll talk about the final judgment. And then number four, we also talk about the new heaven and the new earth. So at the, at the end of these three days, God helping us, we will talk about the four things, the blessed hope, the millennial reign of Christ, the final judgment, and the new heaven and the new earth. Praise the name of our Lord. So I want you to be prepared because we will talk about these things and we will go a bit faster. And um, when, I, when I heard this message, I heard this message many years ago. I heard about this message. It was taught to me uh, at around 1992, 93. That is when I heard about uh, this, this message. And I was so much interested to know about this message. And uh, I've, been, I've been trying to come up with what uh, uh, I, may, I may talk about. But then when, when, um, when I went to school, it's something that has been talked, uh, done, a lot of research has been done. And I want you to know that whatever I am going to teach to you, it will be of great help to you uh, in, in this life, in our Christian walk. Praise the name of our Lord. So we will start by saying, we will, we will start by talking about the blessed hope. And we may ask ourselves, we may ask ourselves what is blessed hope. Or blessed hope is the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. We read this in uh, Titus chapter 2. Paul, was when he was talking to Titus, we talk it uh, in Titus chapter 2, verses 11 and 14. We get to understand this. Titus, 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 yes. That is where we are. Paul, when he was writing to Titus, he, he, he says this, for the grace of of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. And verses teaching us that 
denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, right, righteously, and godly in the present age. Looking for the blessed hope. You see? Looking for what? Looking for blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God, the Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. So when we will be looking at um, the, the blessed hope, it is in two parts, or it is in two parts. Part one, it is about his, his coming for believers. You may, not, you may not be able to write all these things, but all that I am requesting, maybe you can point out a few things. But I want you to, because we are covering it live, or we are covering it with our nini, you can also go home and begin to write it, because I will I'll, I'll be a bit faster. So it is divided into two parts. Divided in two parts. Part one, his coming. Number one, it is his coming for believers. That Jesus is coming for believers. That is what we call the rapture of the church. Number two, it is talking about his coming with believers. Number one is for, for believers. Number two is with believers. That is what we call the revelation of Christ. I am not going to go into details because we'll get into details after this. We believe that the blessed hope is imminent. This means it could happen at any moment. When he comes, the dead in Christ will rise first. Then those saints who are arrived and remain will be caught up. They will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, as Paul explains in First Thessalonians, first four, sixteen and eighteen. Let's see what Paul is saying to the Thessalonians. Yes. For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise. First, remember we said about that. And then verses, verse 17, then we who are alive, then those who are alive, we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them uh, in the crowd to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And verses 18, verses 18, therefore, Comfort one another with these words. That's why we are, we are encouraging one another at such a season like this. Because a time is coming, and a time is coming, we who are dead, or those who are dead, they will rise up. When Christ will come, they will rise up first. Those who are alive, Paul is saying, and he's telling the Soronians, that those, we who are alive, we will not go before those who are who we are dead, but we shall be caught up together with the Lord or together with Christ in the air. There are key words as we continue in this. There are key words that you continue or you you will you will have to know uh, in this in this um, uh, topic. Number one, blessed hope. That is a key word. Our blessed hope is that Jesus is coming again. That is something that you should not forget. It's a key word, blessed hope. But I tell you that Jesus is coming again. And he is coming at any moment. He can even come now. We'll get to, to know all this, to get these things uh, um, as we continue. Another key word is imminent. His imminent return shall always keep us prepared to meet him. So if we know that he is coming, we will always be prepared. Number three, persecution. Jesus warned that his follower would suffer persecution. We will know, we'll see these things as we continue. And then, pre-tribulations. These are words, these are key words that you get to, uh, you get to, 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 to know them. If Jesus come today, this would be a pro 
are pre-tribulation or pre-tribulation. That is rapture. Rapture, that's another key word. We will be taken away to be with Jesus at the rapture. And another key word is revelation. Christ's revelation will affect everyone on earth. Remember, I am not divining these words. All right? If I divine them, it is different. Now, let's talk about the blessed hope. That is the second. When you're talking about the blessed hope, we are talking about the second coming. The second coming of Christ. When we are talking about the blessed hope, this is something that I want you to, and it, I want it to get and to sink into your, into your heart. We are talking about the second coming of Christ. And how do we know, or how will we know that Jesus Christ is coming again? His coming is declared by the scriptures. So, when you are talking about the second coming of Christ, we will get to know that his coming is declared by the scripture. Both Jesus and the angels testify to the second coming of Jesus Christ. And Jesus promised he would come again. If you read John, this is where we see Jesus Jesus is testifying. He is also saying, I am coming again. And you, you, you read First John, uh, not First John, when you read John chapter 14, this is a verse that we all have read and like that. It says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's, how continue? In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Continue. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. You see? He says, I am coming. I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you, you may be also. So Jesus testified that he is coming again. You remember he went? You will see it. You will also see it. That he went and he said, I am coming again. I am coming again. Angels confirmed he would come again. You remember even the angel, they confirmed. You remember what they, what they said, what, what they told the, the men in the book of Acts chapter 1 and verses 11. Acts chapter 1, verses 11. He said, men of Galilee, uh -huh. who also said, men of Galilee, why do you stand here? Who was saying, the angel, why do you stand here gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Uh, uh, are, you, are we together? So far, are we together? I want us to go together so that you will not be confused. You will continue to be uh, more equipped with the word of God. So, the, Jesus confirmed that he is coming again. An angel confirmed that Jesus is coming again. And also, his coming will be a surprise. So his coming, nobody knows. So his coming will be a surprise. Paul warned Christ, Paul warned Christ's coming will be sudden, unexpected. For you know, this is what he said in 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 2. 1 Thessalonians 5, 2. He says, For you know very well. For you know yourself perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. So it's something that is not known. So it will be a surprise. It will be a surprise. And when you read, when you read uh, Matthew 24, Matthew 24, 36, 42, remember, I am teaching. 
I am not. I am teaching. So you got to get to understand these things because they are very, very important. They are very important. Now, when you read Matthew 24, verse 36, 42, it says uh, 36, yes. But of that day and hour, look here, it is, it is, it will be a surprise. It will be the second coming of Christ. Remember, we are talking about the second coming. We are talking about the blessed hope. We are talking about the second coming. The blessed hope is the second coming. It has been, it, it has been uh, summarized with these three words: the second or the the blessed hope. So, the second coming of Christ has been summarized. Uh, with this uh, blessed hope. Now, he says, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. You hear that? It is only the father who knows. And he continued to say that seven, could we go a bit faster? But as the day of Noah, where, where so also will come, who Will the coming of the Son of Man be? And continue, for as in the day before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, continue, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Uh -huh. Then two men will be grinding in the field. One will be taken and another one will be left. Uh -huh. Two women will be grinding at the meal. One will be taken and another one will be left. So it will be a surprise. Uh -huh. Watch therefore. This is the word. Watch therefore for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. You hear that? Even as, we, even as we continue with this, these revival meetings, I am saying, let us be watchful, for we do not know when our Lord, when our Savior, when our King is coming. Buona yesu wa sana. And uh, if you read Luke, if you read Luke also, talks about, about it. Luke 17, 28, 29. Luke Likewise, as it was also in the day of Lot, you hear this? So also, as it was in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they brought, they bought, they sowed, they planted, they built. Uh -huh. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, we will get... You see this, I want you, to, I want you to, to, to understand this particular part, part of, the, of the scripture. Because we'll still get it, we'll still see it in the, in the final judgment. Because we said, we, we said that we, uh, the doctrine about, we are talking about the doctrine about the future. And you remember the four things. So we also get this. And this is a picture. This, this is a picture of what is going to happen. Whatever happened during Lord's time. That the Sodom received the rains of fire. You remember the brimstones. They, they, they fell on Sodom and Gomorrah. And the city was destroyed by fire. So, to Tayona, to Tapata, he, in, when we will be talking about the final judgment. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We'll see how it is, how this one relates with the final judgment. Jesus will come in the air for believers. And there is proof. What we are talking about, the caught up or the, the taking away of bride of Christ has come to be known as the rapture. This word is commonly used by the, the preacher today. However, it is not found in our English Bible or dictionary or whatever. Bible. 
it is not found in the Bible. It's not found in the Bible. It came from the word used in the Latin version of uh, which means to be caught up. When you read First Thessalonians 4:17, 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, this is where you get this word about, about rapture. This is where you get this word that we are talking about caught up, caught up, t uh, taking away, taking away, caught up. This is where we are getting it. So it is from a Latin word, um, a Latin version, and we see uh, 1 Thessalonians 4:17 says, Then we who are arrived, then who we who arrive and remain shall be caught up. That is what we call the rapture. Together with them in the crowd to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. When we are caught up, we shall always be with the Lord. I want you to, I want to, I want to appetize you a bit. I want to appetize you. We will talk about, we will, as we continue, we will talk about the rapture. And I will give you a diagram that will help you to understand. So you should not miss this. I will show you and I will give you a diagram that will help you to understand what is all about the rapture and all others in Jesus' name. Amen. At the rapture, the dead saints will be resurrected. The living saint will be changed. Both the dead and the living saints uh, will then be caught up. Both, both the dead and the living, all of them will be caught up. But there are those who will begin to be caught up. We will, those who will be alive. Kama tutakuwa tumekufa, sisi diyo tutakuwa wakwanza. Kama wale, eh, wale watakuwa uhai, Yes, wakikuja saa hii. Wale watakuwa wamekufa wao ndio watatangulia. Then sisi tutakuja baadaye. Then we will we'll be, we'll, we'll be uh, meet the Lord in the air. Meet the Lord Jesus in the air. This is why we call his coming the blessed hope. Bwana asifiwe sana. Hallelujah. Bwana asifiwe sana. Let's read First Thessalonians. We had read about it, but it's also good you, you, you get to First Thessalonians. We had read about it. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command. Uh -huh. For the Lord himself will come, will descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice of an archangel, with a trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. And uh, then we who are arrived remain shall be caught up together with them in the crowd to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Hallelujah. John also urged us to be ready for the great event. Because this will be a very great event. And John is explaining this in 1 John chapter 3, 2 to, to 3. 2 to 3, 1 John. 1 John. Dear friends, now we are children of God. Beloved, now we are children of God. And it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And verses 3. And everyone who has this hope in him purify himself just as he is pure. Hallelujah. Remember we talked about Sodom. You remember Sodom? Remember we talked about Noah. Remember the ark? You remember? So we must be ready. We must be prepared. Those, those, those two portions of scriptures or passages that we have read, they are telling us that we should always be prepared. We should always be ready because Jesus is coming again. He's coming. He will come to the earth with believers. All right? Remember we said the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is divided into parts. All right? Part one is about the rapture. Part two is about revelation. And revelation is where Jesus is coming with 
believers. The first one, he is coming for believers. The second one, is, he is come, that is what we are calling revelation, is coming with believers. The scripture also speaks of the second part of his coming. Jesus will come to earth and stand upon it. This will be the revelation himself. Uh, this will be the revelation of himself to all mankind. In, in Jude, I want us to read Jude. Jude 14, 15. Now, Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about, about this man also, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints. When you continue reading, because we are continuing reading, when you read Revelation, Revelation 19, verses 11, it's good we, we get to read these things because they will also help us. Revelation 19, verses 11 to 16. And I saw, and I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called faithful and true. And in, and in righteousness, he judges and make, makes war. Uh -huh. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Uh -huh. And the and the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He will he himself treads the winepress of the fiances and wrath of Almighty God. Verse 16, yes. And he has on his robe and on his thine a name written, King of kings and the Lord of lords. Praise the name of our Lord. Matthew 25, 31, 33. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. And all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goat. Uh -huh. And he will set the sheep on the right hand, but the goat on the left. But the goats on the left. Praise the Lord. Let's talk about the time of the rapture. We were in, in Akuru. The whole of last week, I was in Akuru. We had a pastor's conference. And we had an official position about the, the second coming of Christ. And, and whatever I'll be, I'll be talking about is the official, this is the official the official, uh, the official position of Deliverance Church, one as we are So even if you go elsewhere, even if you get our constitution, this is the official position of our of our, of our, of our, of our church. And at the time of uh, of uh, of the rapture, just as the fundamentalists, including Pentecostal, have general taught or have generally taught that uh, the rapture of the saint who will occur before the great tribulations. In other words, there has been there has been uh, there has been several positions that people have taken different positions concerning the rapture, and uh, we as uh, as Deliverance Church we believe in the pre-tribulation. That means that rapture is our present or imminent hope. In other words, we believe. Christ should appear at any time. These three reasons support this belief. Number one, the early church. We believe, we believe, it's good you know this, we believe 
that rapture will come before tribulation, the great tribulation. It's good you know that. That, that is what we believe. There are others who believe that great tribulations will come before the rapture. But I will support our belief with what is in the scripture or what is in the scripture. And this is the, this is the, the position. The early church, as an example, believed in the imminent return of Christ. The church in Paul's days was waiting for his son from heaven. When you read 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, and we see Paul, uh, 2 Thessalonians 1, 9, then this shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Continue up to verse 10. When he comes in that day to be glorified in, in his saint and to the, be admired among all those who believe because our testimony among you was believed. Praise the name of the Lord. That is the Thessalonians. 1 Corinthians 1, 7. So that you come shortly in no uh, Short, short in no gift. Eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. For you to, to be able to understand, you can read there so that you'll be able, there before so that you can be able to understand what Paul is talking about. But we are saying, we see Paul, we see Paul uh, saying, using the word we, we, we. And you see after that, we who are still alive and are and are left when you read First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians four seven, First Thessalonians four seven. You hear or you see Paul talking about we. He talk, he's talking about after that we who are still alive and are left. And then he also talks about we will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. When you talk about when you are when he was talking to the first first. To the Corinthians in First Corinthians chapter 5, 15, and verses 51. The sign of his coming must be fulfilled before Christ is seen on the earth. These signs include such things as the sun, the sun turning dark and the moon turning blood. However, these things may not happen before his sacred coming for his saint. That is what we are calling the rapture. When, and we can, we can get this in, in Luke chapter 21 and verses, verses 28, it says, when this thing, the sign of his coming, begins to take place, uh -huh. now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your hand because your redemptions draweth near or draws near. Our Redemption will be complete at the rapture. In the rapture, it is nearer than the visible coming of Christ. You know, these, these, these are not simple things. You agree with me? Do you agree with me? But when they are taught, when they are taught like the way I'm doing, they become more easier. They become more clearer and clearer and clearer. We have, we, I said, we have a position. And that is, we believe in the pre tribulation. There is the post-tribulation. There are people who believe in post-tribulation. This few opposes the belief Jesus could return at any time. They oppose. You get to see they oppose. They do not believe that Jesus Christ would come at any time. That is them. So that is why I said we believe in the pre-tribulation. In other words, we believe in, 
in, uh, in uh, that Jesus will come first, he will cut or he will catch the, or will be caught up. The rapture will happen and then tribulation. But the others who believe, they oppose that Jesus will come at, uh, at any time. They do not believe in the, uh, the imminent of Christ. We have no need to look up now if we believe the rapture. So we do not have, if we believe in the rapture, we do not have to look at this. But it is important that we know that there are those people who believe in the uh, post tribulation. It's good you get to know that great tribulation is more than persecution. You know, like now, like now, si muna, si sahi, watu wote, unasikiyako watu wakisema, watu wanasema, hii, ni maida mamu iso, haleluya, si unasikiyako watu wakisema hivo, eh, buwana siwe sana, mahuduma le mekuo, mahuduma, the things that are there, eh, this is, these are the signs of the end time. And there is no problem. Atta persecution zile ziko. That is when people are mixed up. When people are mixed up and they, they, they are not able to differentiate between persecutions and post or they, they are not uh, able to distinguish between tribulations and persecutions. But as we continue, as we continue, you will get to know what is, what is all about persecution and what is tribulation. Are you getting me? One as sana. Now I can bear it too. Nazidi kuwa weka mbere. Because it's like I'm introducing. Now I can bear it. Because hapo mbere, mutaweza kuerewa more. You will be able to understand more. We do not have denied that uh, Satan may go through persecutions. Christ and his follower would be persecuted and they were and would, be, would suffer tribulation in this world. And just as you know that Jesus suffered and the disciples suffered. You remember even, uh, even the, the so-called the disciples, some of them, they were, they, were, they were persecuted. They were persecuted. But that persecution... That they, that they received to, to be clear to you was not the liberation. When we are, when we are talking about the early church, because when you are talking about persecutions in the early church, it was, it was to help. It was to help. <laughs> it was to help the, the spread of the gospel. If, because they were so comfortable when they received the Holy Spirit, they were so comfortable in Jerusalem, and that is where we get to see we get to see the 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 disciples enjoying to be together. And you hear Peter is praying for people; his shadow would heal. When you hear all the, all manner of things happening in 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 the in the early church, people are getting healed. Peter is saying, silver and gold have I not, but in the name of Jesus, I, they were so comfortable until Jesus looked at them and he allowed the persecution to come. And when he allowed the persecution to come, then they were to be scattered. That persecution that they received was to, to make sure that they have gone out. Because the gospel would not have come to where we are. Hallelujah. So that persecution is not the liberation. It was to make them, it was to charge them, it was to cause them to be divided so that some would go to Alexandria, others would go to Samaria and that is where we get to see the, the seven because that is a, a different thing altogether, that is where we get the seven outpouring of the Holy Spirit the seven outpouring, the seven feeling of the Holy Spirit upon the church 
So when the first, when, when the, the first outpouring, that is during the Pentecost, when it came, everybody was filled by the Holy Spirit and they spoke in tongues. After that, they felt they were so comfortable. And then the second Jerusalem outpouring came. Why? Because God wanted to disperse them. So that persecution that came, that arose at time, was not tribulation. It was to help them. It was to help to expand the church. Bwana yes was if you son. Let's read Mark 10, 21. Now brothers will deliver our brothers to death and fathers his children and children will rise up, up against his parents and parents then to be put to death and continue and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endure to the end will be saved. Verses 24. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. In verses 25. It is enough for the disciple that he be like his teacher, and a servant like his master. If they have called the master of the whole house Be Beelzebub, how much more will they call those of his household? What am I saying? I'm saying Persecutions is not like tribulation. God's people in various parts of the world are suffering great persecution. Listen, they, we, are not, we are not suffering people in the world. They are not suffering great tribulation. They are suffering great persecutions. Some are sealing their testimony with their own blood, even now. Others are suffering in prison. But this is not the great tribulation described by Jesus. And when you read Matthew, that is where we will see these things. When you read Matthew 24, I think we had read, but it's important we, we read it so that we can have a flow. Verses 21 and 29. Yes. For then there will be great tribulation. Such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, nor 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 ever shall be. Verses twenty nine. Immediately after the revelation of those things, the sun will be darkened; the moon will not give its light; the star will will the stars will fall from heaven, and the power of heaven will be shaken. We will get to just where we are. We will get to see. What is going to happen? All right? When we are talking about and the power of the heaven, no, and um, when we will be talking, and the moon will not give its light, the star will fall from heaven, and you hear the stars will fall from heaven, and the power of the heaven will be shaken. We'll see these things as we continue because we'll get them along as we move forward. In Jesus' name. God's people have often suffered. Yet, a time of trouble is coming that will be more terrible than God's people have ever known. The Lord promised to deliver his people from this great tribulation. And when you read Hebrews, when you read Hebrews, God's people have, have suffered, uh, have often suffered, uh, have often suffered. When you read Hebrews 3.3, 3, uh, 11, 3, who through faith subdue kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, and then verses 34, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of the weakness, weaknesses were made strong because valiant in battle, turned to, to fright the, um, the, armies, the armies of the Aryans. Uh -huh. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured, not escaping deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. This is, this is the writer of Hebrews describing how things uh, may be. Still others are trial of mocking and scourging Yes, of chains and imprisonment. Whatever, what is happening even now. These are some of the things that are happening even now. They were stoned. They were sown in two. They uh, two were tempted, were strained with a sword. They wandered about in the ship, 
uh, sheep skin and goat skin, being dis destitute, afflicted, tormented, uh -huh, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in, in desert and mountains, in dens, in caves of the earth. And the last, and all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. I am saying, these are the things that the church and the people may go through. But remember, this is not great tribulation. Let's see, let's see. What Jesus is talking about when he's talking about the great tribulation. And we see how he is going to deliver us from the great tribulation. Revelation 7, 14. And I, and I say to him, sir, you know. So he said to me, these are the ones who came out of the great tribulations. And washed their robe and made them white in the blood of the lamb. But as we are saying, now, the reason why I'm saying you get to understand these things as we continue, because you will be able to see the rapture, the great tribulation, all right? And the millennial reign of Christ, the thousand years. And then after that, you see, we'll get to the final judgment. And then after the final judgment, we will go now. We'll be talking about the new heaven and the new earth. Tell your neighbor, are you hearing what we are saying? Are you hearing what is being said? Let me say this. Our redemption will be complete at the rapture. Our what? Our redemption will be complete at the rapture. It is nearer than the visible coming of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of our Lord. Praise the name of our Lord. We are talking about the great tribulation. And I know that God is going to bless us. There are nine statements about the rapture. Nine statements about the rapture. And these are very important for you to get to understand. Because this one, I want you to, to listen. Because this one is very, very key. They are very, very key. And I want you to listen. But there are nine. There are nine statements about the rapture. Our blessed hope. I'm just making a statement. Our blessed hope is the second coming of Christ. It includes two parts. As we said, the first part is rapture. Jesus coming will come secretly to take believers home. Later, in the second part, Jesus will come publicly to judge the world. Let us now briefly consider the, the nine statement. Number one, the first statement is, before rapture, the devil and his demon will be cast down. Just as you know, God fled the children of Israel from the Egyptians by his great power. The Israelites did not see Pharaoh army again after they crossed the Red Sea. Likewise, we will not see the devil and his work again after rapture. The angel Michael will clear the sky of all of of all our spiritual enemies. The devil, the devil's downfall is described in Revelation 12, verses 7 to 12. And I would want us to read this one so that you will see that before the rapture, the devil and his demon will be cast down. Revelation 12, 12, 12, verses 7 to 12. Revelation 12, 7 to 12. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought. Uh -huh. But they did not prevail. Nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. 
So the great dragon was cast out that serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceived the world, the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Mm -hmm. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. For the accuser of our brethren who accuses them before our God day and night has been cast down. Uh -huh. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to death. Verses 12. Therefore rejoice, O heaven, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great love because he knows that he has a short time. Buenas, if you son. I will begin there tomorrow. I, I, I want you to digest. I want you to digest up to that point. I do, not, I do not want to give you more than that. But I want you to know that Jesus is coming back again. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming again. And he's coming for you. And he's coming for me. Hallelujah. He's coming for me. And he's coming for you. So he may come at any time. He may come at any moment. So we got to be prepared. In other words, as we continue with this revival meeting, let's continue to be prepared because we are going somewhere. Remember we said we are talking about the doctrine of the future. Doctrine about the future. The doctrines about the future. We talked about the, we talked about the, the, the blessed hope. We talk about the millennial reign of Christ and we talked about the final judgment. And we are we we are we at the end of the day we'll be talking about where we normally speak and say every single day that we are going to heaven. And that is where we shall rule and reign with the Lord.